Okay, in this one, we've determined the uh, combination gas valve has failed, so we're going to go ahead and replace it. And all this, this isn't about diagnosing whether it's failed or not. This is about actually replacing the valve. This is just an old combination gas valve. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is come down, shut off the gas. And of course, the next thing you're going to want to do is kill the power to the furnace. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do, I pulled the gas pipe off. I'm going to pull the wiring off of here. I'm going to pull the pilot tube off. And I'm going to pull the thermocouple off. One of the things I'm going to recommend, I've got the thermocouple off. When you take this pilot off, use an open end wrench. You can use a crescent wrench on them, but it's really easy to round them. So just use a, a 7 16 open end wrench. Okay, if you look here, I've got a pair of water pump pliers on one side of this, and I've got a pipe wrench on the other side. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is sometimes you can do it without with just using the water pump pliers on one side, but occasionally you will bend this manifold, the brackets or something, and then it won't uh, fire properly. So usually I want a backup wrench in one of these things, kind of like that. Okay, you can see I've got the valve loose, and uh, this is a time pull the burners out, clean the burners up, uh, pull the pilot assembly out, clean it up. I'll show you what that looks like on this one. Okay, there's your pilot assembly there. You're going to pull these burners completely out, clean out the tubes. You're going to check the heat exchanger, and you can do it with a mirror, or you can do it with a uh, camera, whatever, but you got to check that heat exchanger because uh, you'll want to replace a gas valve on a unit with a busted heat exchanger. Okay, now that we've got the heat exchanger tubes backed out. We need to check that heat exchanger uh, for cracks. This is one of the tools you can use, just a mirror, and you can place it like that. This one's a little wide for these heat exchangers, but it actually will work anyway because you can see up there. Okay, when I uh, use a mirror like this, you can see that you can see the inside of that heat exchanger fairly well. You can't see all the way up. You never can. Uh, this is okay to use. Uh, and it tells you places to look for. You can also stick your hand in there. If you find a place that that uh, mirror shows up, then you may want to uh, put your hand in there and see if you can feel a crack. One of the ways you can feel it is to... Uh, uh, run a little tiny screwdriver over it and see if it clicks as it goes across. Because sometimes uh, you'll have, oh, where water or something has run down part of it and it'll look like a crack. But uh, that's the most common place where they crack. Heat exchangers can't actually crack any place. And there I'll show you another way of doing this. Okay, the next thing you can do is you can use one of the cameras. Now they've got a snake end on them. There's a light there. The light's not real good on most of them I've seen. I've tried several of, the, several of these. But you just stick it in there like that and you use an auxiliary flashlight uh, to get a little more light in there. And you can go up and I'll show you some pictures of what this looks like inside. But uh, what its biggest value is, is once you find a crack, you can... Uh, uh, document it. You can take a picture. And that's uh, pretty valuable in this world now. So uh, anytime you're up there, you're, you're looking through something, you can take a picture of it. And then uh, if there's any question later on, then they, uh, you have documentary evidence. Okay, this is uh, a picture taken by the camera. It does show farther up in there, but you can see the quality isn't real high. I'd like to see it better on these cameras. Uh, this was about a $200 camera made by DeWalt. It's not a half bad camera, but 
you still have problems you need to probably add a little uh, more light in there it's mostly once you find one is documenting where it is and how big it is and so on okay burners are cleaned heat exchanger has been checked uh, and we're going to go ahead and put the gas valve in the one thing about these uh, heat exchanger checks uh, you know you'll have people tell you everything under the sun that you know heat exchangers don't crack they're all cracked uh, there's no way to find them except by using such and such method or such and such method uh, you just have to use some common sense with these things you're looking for flame uh, change when the burner starts obviously if you replace the gas valve with something like that the flame didn't work anyway so you're not going to be able to check it until it's done but when a fan comes on you should be checking for a variation in the in the uh, burner flames and a co check is a really great idea do that in the duct work probably i would start out two or three feet down the line and get your monoxer in there and find out if there is any carbon monoxide. If there is, you got to look farther. If there isn't, I'm not too worried about it. Just do a good check of the heat exchanger. Use your hand uh, a lot of times. Uh, once you've either looked in there with a mirror or you've used your camera, you may have found something, go up there and feel it with your hand, maybe run a little screwdriver across it, something like that. Uh, but follow up on everything you see and just be thorough one thing I'll caution on here's your pilot assembly here this is really loose so I tighten this up before I got in there we may still have leak problems with it but uh, I would tighten that fitting up because it gets knocked around quite a bit okay before we put this back together we're going to replace a thermocouple and this is probably the easiest one you'll find to get out most of them have a fitting on them. You'll put it up in there, make sure it seats, and you're ready to put this uh, burner back in. Okay, here's the new valve. It's got a three-quarter outlet, and we get these things come with it, and they're just reducers. And we're going to pipe dope those up, and we're going to put the valve on. One thing about the pipe doping, make sure there's none of it down here. I have had uh, manufacturers gripe about us service techs getting uh, pipe dope inside the pipe and damaging the valve. So uh, when you finish putting it on, just kind of wipe it off around the, the uh, where you screw it in. One other thing you want to make sure of, notice there's an arrow there. That's telling you which way the gas should be going. So it's going this way into the gas valve. Be sure you get that thing in right. Okay, another thing I wanted to show you this, we've had to reroute this pilot tube around uh, because the pilot comes out in a different spot here. These, you know, this is an aluminum valve with brass fitting. These seems absolutely love to cross thread. So when you're lining this up, make sure you've got it lined up right on the money and try to start it with your fingers and get it started with your fingers see now I've got that started with my fingers and it's uh, now it's going to thread in normally uh, so just remember that these things are uh, bugaboos on cross threading this is also the biggest place you'll have leaks is here is here and down at the pilot. So a little care with this one. And when you tighten this down, it needs to be snug. Don't get Looney Tune. Remember, you're dealing with aluminum. Next thing you're going to get your uh, thermocouple in. Again, this is aluminum. Try to start this thread by hand. And when you get this tightened down, do not get Looney Tune with this one at all. Uh, this one does not like to be over tightened, like just halfway snug. 
like that. Okay. Okay, here you can see we've got everything in. Uh, the uh, one, one thing I wanted to go over a little bit on how tight to get these things. This is pipe thread. Pipe thread seals by being tight. And so you want these fittings tight. You don't have to go nuts. I mean, this is aluminum here, and you could damage it if you got crazy on it. But generally, you want to be pretty tight on these on all these pipe fittings. So get them snugged up pretty good. Then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to turn on your gas cock. Okay, here's the gas cock here. It's been off all this time. It's turned back on. We're ready uh, for this unit to fire up. Now, one of the things I'm going to do first, so I don't get in terrible trouble, is I'm going to do a little bit of leak checking. Okay, what we're going to do now, the, the gas valve's off. I want to leak check up to the gas valve before I fire this off so I don't get a big surprise. So, this is one fitting I've messed with. Uh, the the uh, union here I've messed with. And this valve. Okay, what I want to do now is the gas valve's off. I want to check right up to here. The reason I'm doing this before I start it up is I don't want to get any big surprises. So I want to, any fittings that I have disturbed, I'm going to leak check. There's one right here. There's a union here. Uh, and there's the valve. So I'm going to leak check all that stuff first. Now you can do it with... Uh, soap bubbles, but I got a toy. Uh, okay, this is a combustible gas leak detector, and okay, so I get it just down so it doesn't uh, go Looney Tune. Okay, I'm going to be checking here, here. Can't hurt to check over here too. These are extremely sensitive. Okay, no leak so far. Okay, for the wiring of the gas valve. There's only just two wires in it. This center one is actually just a terminal point and the way you can tell it's a terminal point is look on that little black insulator here. And you see that little coil right there? It goes between here and there. That's the, uh, the gas valve sol solenoid. So just wire it into there. Now we're okay to light off the pilot. There's going to be air in these lines, so it's not going to light off right away. And so it can be a bit frustrating. Okay, I've got the pilot lit. And you can see it's burning in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and turn off the gas cock. Okay, that means I'm going to just shut this off. Okay, the pilot's going to go out now. Okay, I've not touched this haven't done anything with it. Now we're going to wait for the clunk that tells us that it went off. Okay, now you heard it. It has shut off. We're going to do one final test. I'm going to turn this gas cock back on and I'm going to try to attempt to light the pilot. Now I'm using a torch this time. Okay. It did not relight. What did that tell me? It told me that the pilot valve does not leak. If I still had a pilot with the gas cock back on and with the gas valve left in the pilot position, it should have shut off all gas. And it did. 
Okay, we're about to relight this thing. Okay, before we fire it off, uh, I have closed the primary air on all the burners. So that means that I'm going to have two little uh, primary air at the burners. I want to adjust them so I just get rid of the yellow tips. And this is natural gas. Uh, propane's a little different. You want to keep just a little bit of a yellow tip on it. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing fired off. And I'll adjust these uh, burners. And I'm going to be waiting for the fan to come on. Okay, my burners are on. And you can see lots of yellow tips on them. And we're getting the laziness out of the burners. And getting rid of those yellow tips. And now we're going to wait for the fan to come on. Now when you're watching this on this video, it comes through a little bit too light. So it's hard to see whether you got yellow tips or not. But let's uh, wait for that fan to come on and let's see what happens. Okay, now as you looked at those flames, they didn't wave to one side, they didn't, they didn't make any difference at all. So that's telling me that I probably do not have a problem where the fan pressure is actually pushing air into the burner tubes. Which would mean uh, I have a cracked heat exchanger. Okay, once I've got everything running, I'm back with this doohickey. You can use, again, soap bubbles uh, to test, but these are actually better because they'll test places like here. Uh, I can't really test that with soap bubbles. And it tests all the gaskets in the uh, gas valve. So let's see what we got. Okay, it looks like I got a leak at that pilot right there. So we're going to put some soap bubbles on it and see if we can uh, uh, pinpoint it. But it looks like that pilot's got a leak. Okay, once I've got everything running, I'm back with this doohickey. You can use, again, soap bubbles uh, to test, but these are actually better because they'll test places like here. Uh, I can't really test that with soap bubbles. And it tests all the gaskets in the uh, gas valve. So let's see what we got. Okay, it looks like we got a leak at that pilot tube, so we're going to have to pull that pilot tube off and see if we can uh, seal that leak. Okay, here I've removed this pipe, and what I'm going to do, uh, I had a leak up here, but I also had a leak here at the pilot too, so I'm going to go ahead and put some pipe dope on this surface right here and this one right here also. Uh, in addition, if you want, you can actually replace this tubing and just put new tubing on. You'll, uh, you may not have this fitting here uh, because that's going to be another ferrule. This ferrule usually comes with the gas valve when you replace a gas valve. 
Uh, so you may not have this other one, so you may have to use the old uh, old tubing. But sometimes pipe dope will seal these things. Uh, I've had a lot of troubles with these things sealing, and you got to be careful not to get the pipe dope into the pipe. Just get it on this surface here. Okay, here you can see I've got it on the surface. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in. We'll see if we seal the leak. Okay, we're back with our uh, leak detector. With the pilot on, there's nothing coming out. I don't have any leaks here. Going down here, I don't have any leaks here. So, my little thing with the uh, pipe dope did do the job. Okay, the next thing we're going to do on this thing is we're going to uh, check the firing rate. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to put it back in the pilot position. Because you don't want to do this, what we're going to do now, with the main burner on, you get fire in your face. I've got an Allen head in this tap here. And you can see the tap, and I will open it. I will go ahead and take that out. I'm going to put this in, and I'm going to hook it up to a manometer. Okay, we're ready to go. Manometer's put in. Uh, we're going to turn it on. Okay, we're showing 2.31 inches water column. Let's find out if that's a correct water column. Okay, we're right here we're looking at the model and serial plate. And we we go down below and look and I see manifold pressure three and a half inches. That's for natural gas. Okay. So I'm incorrect on my manifold pressure, so I'm gonna have to adjust it. Okay, on this gas valve, this cap here has to be removed. And the adjustment is underneath. Okay, there's my adjustment there. Let's get her fired up again. Okay, I'm going to turn this regulator down because I need higher pressure. Clockwise. It looks like we're pretty close. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put this cap back on. I'm going to shut my furnace off, or shut off the burner, so that I can remove this. Okay, here I've got my cap. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the cap. I put a little bit of pipe dope on the threads. I'm going to get that reinstalled. Okay, one last time. I'm going to go over uh, I'm going to check where I put that plug back in. I'm going to check here where I took this cap off see if there's any leaks there and generally around the valve I already did that once but it can't hurt to do it again uh, you do not have to use the manometer to check this manifold pressure if you don't want to you can you go out and uh, clock the meter and I'll link a, uh, a video on clocking the meter. Okay, uh, now I'm going to turn my burner on and I've disconnected the fan. Now if it's a belt drive or something you can take the belt off or just have to take a wire off if it's a fan. And I'm going to wait for this thing to limit out because I've got to check the, the limit switches.
Okay, it has limited out, so we know the limit switch works. Okay, because this is a drafted appliance, we do have to check to be sure that the draft hood is actually pulling in. You can use a match, I'm just using something that's lit. It has to pull in all spots. If it's not working properly, it will actually put this out. But it is, but you can see it's pulling in. Okay, another thing I want you to watch, you probably can't see it real good, but when that fan motor comes on, you shouldn't have any change in that burner. That's telling me that the heat exchanger, the, the air blowing across the heat exchanger is not mixing with the gases in the heat exchanger. So we'll watch and wait till that fan comes on and we'll see if there's any difference we can see. And you're going to look in each burner tube to be sure uh, that there's not a problem there. Okay, you can see it didn't make any difference. Uh, there isn't any problem with this heat exchanger. Okay, I think I've covered everything. Get all your covers back on. There's a cover goes back on this uh, uh, above the burners. Be sure everything's tight. Check amp draw of everything. And you should be good for a gas valve replacement.